How's it going everyone? Tonight we take a look at the SH Figure Arts Death Trooper Specialist. So if you're not aware, Tamashi Nations released the standard Death Trooper as a regular release. However, making the Death Trooper Specialist a Japanese exclusive with the Rogue One Blu-ray box set. So before getting into the figure itself, we will take a brief look at the box set, you know, just to show you guys what's inside and then move on to the figure right after. And before I begin this review, I just want to say thank you to my friend who I bought this box set for. Uh, he was generous enough to let me review this before sending it to him. I know a lot of people like to keep their collectibles, you know, with all seals intact, kind of factory fresh. But he was pretty cool about, you know, letting me opening it up and, you know, showing you guys. So, if you're watching, thanks mate. Okay, so once we get out of the box, you get a nice glossy carded cover with a picture of the Death Trooper on the front. Once you take that off, it's your standard SH Figure Arts cardboard box. And this is the box that they, that SH Figure Arts ships their figures out to you in. I'm not sure if you guys have bought anything directly from Tamashi Nation's website, but uh, when they ship exclusive figures out to you this is pretty much what you get so for packaging we don't get the standard clear window instead we have a picture of the death trooper on the front with the star wars rogue one logo on the top there sh figure arts bandai and tamashi nation logos on the bottom again we have the star wars rogue one logo on the side there another close-up of the Death Trooper on the other side and then a couple of other promo shots and the accessories that the Death Trooper Specialist comes with. And here he is out of the package. And I have to admit, guys, that I am not the most well-versed Star Wars fan out there. I mean, I love the movies. I really enjoy watching the animated TV shows. And I do collect the figures mostly in the 6-inch uh, Bandai Model Kit series, from the Bandai Model Kit series. But I really did have to do some research about the Death Trooper before actually doing this review. But uh, for all the Star Wars experts out there. If I do make a mistake, I apologize in advance. Uh, if there is anything that I say that's incorrect, please let us know because one of the best things about doing this review was actually the research. I uh, found a lot of interesting facts about the Death Trooper. 
So if you have anything to add, please let us know down in the comments. So being a death trooper specialist, we do get several new additions to the armor, tactical gear and weapons. This including the shoulder armor on the right side, pouches on the left side of the chest, additional pouches and holsters for the three 25 fragmentation grenades around the waist and the inclusion of the DLT heavy blaster rifle. So looking at the sculpt and paintwork, it's pretty much what we would expect from an SH figure arts figure. Everything is molded really well and all the details are sharp and clean. I think this is pretty standard for all trooper figures, but I do appreciate the shiny and matte contrast. All of the armor pieces are a shiny plastic, whilst the areas that are supposed to be material underneath the armor are a matte finish. It really adds just a nice contrast to the figure and gives it, you know, more dimension aesthetically. For paint applications, we don't get much at all, but for what we do get, it is done pretty well. Uh, you get some highlights on the helmet, some silver around the vent areas, green for the floodlights. There is some silver detailing on the buckles and on the belt. Some sil silver details on the pouch, on the front and some detailing on the back as well. Also on the E11D gun you get some silver highlights on the barrel there which is a nice touch. But that's it in terms of paint applications. So articulation wise he is quite limited but in saying that you know with all the gear that he has on you would expect some movement to be hindered. Still, he has enough range of motion to get some pretty decent poses. Looking at the head articulation, his head is actually on a ball joint, so he has left and right swivel. You can just move those pouches at the front out of the way because they are on a ball joint. For up and down motion, it's quite hindered because of the shoulder armor, so he can't look up or down all too much. For his shoulders, for his left shoulder, he does have a butterfly joint going inward and outward. His shoulder pads are actually connected to his arm so you can move them out quite far up. He does have a full 360 upper bicep swivel double jointed elbows, a upper arm swivel and a wrist swivel with a hinge going in and going out. Looking at the right arm because he does have that shoulder armor piece there it does kind of hinder the butterfly joint and it does stop his arm going forward at that point and going back that much as well. However, he does still have the same range of motion going out and the rest of the other arm articulation is there as well. The specialist actually has a upper and lower torso joint but because of all the gear that he has in the front, he can't actually crunch forward at all. He goes back a little bit and he does have a swivel for both upper and lower torso joints but again it is limited by all the gear that he does have on his torso. So for leg articulation he can get his legs spread out that much the holster is actually made from a soft rubber plastic so it doesn't really hinder the articulation. The two front pouches, they do swivel so you can get them out of the way and get him to kick out this far. He has upper thigh swivel, 
double jointed knees. His feet swivel side to side. They don't move back because of the armor. They move forward. He has toe articulation and he does also have ankle pivot. So for accessories, the Death Trooper Specialist does come with a pair of fisted hands, a pair of open palm hands or gun barrel holding hands. He also comes with a pair of blaster holding hands with a trigger finger or I guess they could be pointing finger hands as well. He also comes with three blasters. The SE-14R light repeating blaster. The E-11D, which I think is the same blaster the uh, tank commander trooper holds as well. And the DLT heavy blaster rifle. So for the SE-14R light repeating blaster you can actually have that holstered onto the death trooper. All you need to do is just take off the top piece and replace it with the holster piece like so. Take that piece off the belt and plug it in to the side like so. So for the blasters they actually fit into the blaster wielding hands pretty firmly quite nicely so you're not going to get the guns falling out and to replace the hands just your standard SH figure arts hinge with a ball peg might actually be easier to get this on without the gun because I'll probably break the gun alright guys so just some size comparisons with the Bandai model kit Darth Vader the model kit Stormtrooper and the SH figure arts tank commander. So as you can see the Death Trooper does stand a little shorter than the model kit Stormtrooper. It's really not that much of a difference. I think they scale pretty well. Obviously the tank commander is the shortest and Vader you know being the tallest as he should be. I think you know all of these you can actually have on your Star Wars shelf and they would look pretty nice together. I mean you know the troopers are humans underneath the suits so you know having a little bit of size difference between the troopers um, you know might actually add a bit of character to your display scale wise you could definitely have it amongst your six inch figure collection but in saying that I wouldn't recommend this for the casual collector one it's an exclusive to Japan and will fetch a pretty high price but it also comes with a Blu-ray which you might not want. I picked it up for about $130 but it has gone down in price since to about $100. I know that there are only two other options, the Black Series which comes in a 3-pack or the Model Kit. And I asked my friend who this figure belongs to about the size being an SH Figure Arts, they do scale a little smaller than the Black Series, but he told me that it wasn't really an issue for him. I also asked him why he didn't opt for the cheaper model kit, and for him it wasn't really an option since he didn't want to put together his figure. So I guess if you fall into that category, and if you do have a bit of money to spend, the SH Figure Arts Specialist is definitely a very nice figure to have in your collection just being such an exclusive figure might put some buyers off. So in saying that, I had a lot of fun researching the Death Troopers and it really made me consider expanding on my own small Star Wars collection beyond the few figures that I have already. 
But I hope you guys enjoyed this review. I'm sorry that it was a little late, but I'll try to be more consistent with my future videos. Anyway, enjoy the rest of the week everyone. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys next time.